As one maraca said to the other, what's shaking, bruh? Today I've got for you, sorry about that. Today I've got for you a uh, Hongdian D5 uh, Kin Dynasty. I hope I pronounced that vaguely right. Um, this is a new offering from Hongdian. Um, commemorating the Kin Dynasty of the Chinese Emperor, I think. Um, saw one of these reviewed recently um, by Chris Rapp. Um, which I will point you to down in the description because he's gonna he did a much better job of history and detail um, around the kind of heritage and what the pen's based on than I will because I'm a lazy sod um, and I just thought well that's attractive um, these come in four different finishes currently um, so you've got a black uh, a gold and a kind of dark green with different um, trimmings and furniture. So some have got gold trim, etc., etc. Um, this is kind. Of, this is. I went for the red um, with a kind of ruthenium-esque dark chrome um, trim because I liked it. I was just sort of looking, you know you just get them pens and it's just like oh oh. I like the look of that. Um, well, that was one of these. So, we'll run through the parts of the pen. I'll do a little writing sample and then I'll witter on. Um, so, this is an all metal bodied pen. Uh, and you've kind of got on the barrel, you've got uh, kind of armor plated kind of motif. Um, then you've got two bands, three bands in fact, if you count that one, um, of different design and patterning. Um, screw cap. Sorry, just had a brain fade. I'm going to do the clip first because I'm an idiot. Quite stiff, but usable. You don't have to get a crowbar in there or anything like that. Um, you've got these lovely patterning uh, on the cap, that kind of um, dark chrome finished overlay. Uh, so you can see just the uh, difference in uh, height. I'm going to try and stop saying uh, I do apologize. Yeah, so that's overlaid the top, so you've got that kind of textured finish there. Um, top finial has a design on it, kind of like a baby um, teddy bear with a horn, yeah, bear horn, no, no it doesn't sound good does it, then you've got another um, symbol on the piston turning knob finial on the back end, as I say if you want the, any of these symbols deciphered I recommend the vid Chris Rapp's review that um, I will post a link to down below because I don't want to just rip off what he's said um, and equally for information gathering he's going to do a much better job than me um, but anyway so screw cap like I say unscrews in one and a quarter then you've got that same kind of um, armor plate design on the section so it is a metal section um, so some may be worried about Slipperiness, uh, they don't tend to bother me that much. Um, but you do have that design which adds a little bit of texture in there. So if it does bother you, then that might help. Um, piston filler, as I say, you've got a couple of very subtle ink windows in there. Even more subtle than a black finish. Um, but they are, in fact, functioning ink windows. I can't quite get that to the light. But when you hold that up to light, you can see straight through there. It is handy. Uh, threads are not sharp at all, nice and smooth, so if you wanted to hold that back in your hand like that, that is perfectly comfortable. You've got a little flare out uh, before you get to the nib, so depending on where you're going to hold that, uh, you can probably find a place for you, whatever your grip is. Um, number six size steel nib um, with a like a black coating, so it doesn't quite match this, like it's not, uh, say, ruthenium coated or anything like that, it's like the black coating. Um, 
number six steel fine in this case as you can see you've got further designs on there Hong Dian, fine 1997 which I believe is some sort of anniversary don't know. then you've got plastic feed which um, is slightly different shape than I think Hong Dian's usual offerings um, vaguely reminiscent of pelican shape feed possibly um, as I say fine nib and you've got that black coating on there so I'll come back to that when I do the writing sample but um, you may find that offers a little bit more feedback um, than an uncoated nib piston filler this is the piston turning knob uh, I'm not going to do it because I've got ink in there at the moment but it's really nicely put together you can barely see like that join or anything there um, I find that with a few Hongdian piston fillers actually I really like the way they join uh, the barrel just blends and you can't see massive um, steps or jumps or anything like that steps or jumps don't know don't know weird today a bit weird today um, so yeah that's the parts of the pen in a roundabout and waffly sort of way uh, measurements are these um, so capped and uncapped and posted sorry I should say it does post but it posts so it doesn't post on to the piston knob but just past it onto the back of the that last uh, ring on the back of the pen but doesn't post deeply so I'm not even going to say securely there's a little bit of wobble in there and you could probably jam that on but you know but it's a heavy pen heavy cap so it's going to back weight it also makes it very long at 175 millimeters as I say the cap is 20 grams so it's going to add a bit of weight on there if you wanted to do that um, I find it perfectly long enough and nicely balanced unposted for my personal tastes um, so there's ink in the pen so give a gram or two um, in the weights barrel about 14 mil pretty straight uh, until you get to not the piston turning knob obviously slightly recessed there and the section is about 10 going about 11 sorry tapering in slightly to 10 and then flaring back out before you get to the nib for comparison with some other pens so you got the Hongdian D5 uh, next to Twisby Eco Aswine P30 uh, Diplomat Aero Fabrica Stell Loom and Lamy 2000. Then you've got an Aswine V169 Jinhao X159, Jinhao 100, Jinhao X450, and a Moonman P135. So, as you can see, it's kind of um, I don't want to say standard, it's a big pen, but you know, if you if you look at your X159, they're slightly shorter, slightly slimmer, you're kind of looking just ever so slightly longer and not a dissimilar girth to like a Twisby Eco but obviously made of metal so a bit more chunky a bit more substantial um, and a lot heavier than such a thing let's check out the writing experience uh, so we have I promised to stop saying er, uh, didn't I? So we have the er uh, Hongdian uh, D5. Sorry, I'll pack it in. Um, Kin Dynasty in a fine steel nib in this case ink in here is diamine Syrah paper is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM by the way always forget that
Um, so I don't know if you picked it up, but as I mentioned, you can hear just a bit more feedback because um, of that black coating on the nib. It's not scratchy or anything. Um, it just gives you that extra little bit of feedback and experience um, between nib and paper. If you've ever had a black coated nib, you'll be familiar with such a thing. Um, it's not unpleasant, uh, just something to be aware of. And generally, over time, the um, black coating will wear off the tipping with it. months of use, etc. etc. Um, but yeah, decent flow there. Try it quick. Um, performed quite well there, there's the odd little tiny skip slash hard start um, on occasion. Uh, wetness, see a little hard start there. Wetness pretty decent. Bear in mind this is a fine nib, so it's not a bad performance at all. Uh, line variation. You can get a little bit out of that. However, careful. Not a flex nib. Um, and I'll talk about it in a sec, but I don't find this feed keeps up particularly well. Um, which is odd, because I looking at it, I um, oh, I didn't say. Um, looking at it, I thought, well, that looks like a good feed, kind of specially designed or whatever appropriated for this nib, but um, this one at least, I do notice issues with it running a bit dry sometimes. Um, anyway, reverse, that is dry. It's quite scratchy too, not very pleasant. So yeah, um, so yeah uh, as I say, it's performed quite well there. What I do find is after, I don't, know, I don't want to say extensive use, but after a page or two even, I mean, you can see it's drying up a little bit there. But after a page or two, it does get a bit, uh, quite a bit drier than this, um, to the point where sometimes I've actually had it dry up. I mean, obviously, it's not flex nib, and you shouldn't really be pushing it too far. But I'm just doing that to the flow through a little bit. So I found it a little bit inconsistent. Um, whether or not that's due to the fact that it just needs a jolly good flush or clean, there might be something just um, stuck in the feed, a bit of residue or something. Um, maybe open the tines up a little bit. This is straight out of the box. I haven't done anything to it, so. I mean, you're not getting much gap between those tines. Um, feed might have a bit of dirt in it or something like that. Um, so I'm going to give it a good thorough clean um, and maybe floss those tines a little bit, um, see what I can do. So I don't think it's unfixable, but just full disclosure, I do have a few issues with this, which does spoil my overall out of the box enjoyment because um, this is one I was quite excited about so I ended up being a tiny bit disappointed I was aware that the black nib might offer a different type of feedback prepared for that but um, I do find it can dry up uh, you get a little bit of starvation in the feed there but um, might just be the case that it needs a really thorough flush um, we'll see about that um, Okay, so it didn't come in a box, it just came in a um, little, you know, plastic pen sleeve of the, sometimes referred to as a pen condom, that sort of thing. Um, it did come with a wrench uh, to uh, remove the piston, but um, as noted in Chris's review, which I'm going to put down there, uh, it doesn't fit, if you open up the, the 
piston knob. It's it's one with like a little hook thingy. So I've stupidly left it somewhere else, but it doesn't quite fit in. Um, so yeah, I mean, you might be able to find something that fits, but nib unit unscrews as well, so you could just syringe down there for it for a good flush of the inside. So what do I think? So this is one of those that uh, um, I actually, oh yeah, no, I really fancy that. Um, it's my sort of thing. I, I, I like the kind of metal and weighty and, you know, a bit of different patterning. Um, I like the piston knob design um, on the Hongdin. I've got a couple more. Uh, I just really like the way it blends in uh, to the barrel. Just a personal thing. I like the detail on this. Um, sorry, I forgot. You've got a little symbol on the cat band there. Forgot that one. So yeah, this is covered in um, you know symbol and uh, decoration, which I won't decipher, but others will. Um, so aesthetically, really like it. Uh, Comfort-wise, really like it. Really comfortable in my hand. Good weight for me. Good overall size for me. Sits well. Um, so you've got those ink windows there, which I like because I quite like the more subtle ink window. I don't tend to like a great big, like plain ink window. Um, it's never a particularly deal breaker, but if I do, I like it covered up by the cap as well, which this does. So that's nice. Uh, I like the kind of armor plated design on that. That's good. Um, so I mentioned there's four different finishes. You can look those ones up. Piston filler. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, look, to be aware of the fact that if you get one of these, you might want to give it a thorough clean first. Um, I mean, it's decent advice with any new pen you get. And sometimes I follow it and sometimes I don't. You know what it's like. You get it. Oh, yes, yes. Been waiting for this. Yes, yes. Want to try it out. So you just bung some ink in it. So I'll give it a f thorough flush through and um, see where I get with the nib and maybe post an update. But just to be aware of those issues I spoke about, I do find it can run a bit dry. Um, I do find it's the feed kind of suffers from starvation a little bit sometimes and obviously just it's not a fault uh, with the black coating but just note that you might get a bit of increased feedback on that um yeah so i do get a few hard starts off the nib like i say the only other thing i don't re i think could be better is just the closure on that cap it's fine but it's just not quite as smooth as i'd like but that's a nitpicky, far more um, concerned with the nib performance. But as I say, generally from Hongdi and I find the nib performance really good, which is why I was quite confident buying this and uh, even selected a fine nib. I've got uh, a few Hongdians and anything from an extra fine to a medium have worked beautifully. So that's a um, bit of a disappointment on that one. But like I say, I should be able to fix that with a few simple steps hopefully. Uh, price of these is around about £50 pounds, um, or whatever equivalent fits your time zone. Um, you get, uh, I think I got mine from Etsy. I think it was Easy Buy on Etsy. Because um, they would not, AliExpress would not deliver to my area. Um, these are now available on Amazon Prime in the UK. Um, and I'm sure you can pick them up on eBay and stuff like that for a comparable price, but around about £50. Okay, that's what I think of that. Uh, if I have any updates on that nib, I will maybe post a short one or something like that. But overall, it's a really gorgeous pen, good way. I just need to sort my nib out a little bit. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Bye.